Welcome to the world of a classic TV series set in glamorous Los Angeles. This crime drama from 1958 follows the adventures of two smooth private investigators as they crack cases. But there's more to it than meets the eye. As you dig into the series, you'll discover funny stories, surprising twists, and heart-tugging moments. So, stay tuned for surprises. Have you ever been inspired or affected by this show? Share your personal tales below. Whether it's a cherished memory of watching with loved ones or a moment it sparked your interest in detective work, we want to hear it. And which character from the series did you love the most? Share your thoughts. We're eager to hear your stories and memories. Get ready for a trip down memory lane. Considered a standout television series from the late 1950s to early 1960s, 77 Sunset Strip offered viewers an engaging mix of detective stories set in Hollywood. The show followed the adventures of two private investigators, Stuart Bailey and Jeff Spencer. Stuart was the brainy one, while Jeff brought charm to the duo. A notable part of the series was the character Kooky, played by Ed Burns. Kooky, initially a cool parking attendant, became a teen idol and eventually joined the agency as an investigator, showing the show's cultural impact. Supported by characters like the receptionist Suzanne and the comedic Roscoe, the series had a cool vibe that appealed to audiences. Real-life places like Dino's nightclub added authenticity to the Sunset Strip setting. Despite facing challenges like cast changes, 77 Sunset Strip remains a classic example of the detective genre's heyday, with its episodes still enjoyed by fans today. The character Stuart Bailey debuted in a movie called I Love Trouble, where he was portrayed by Franchot Tone. Stuart originated from one novel and three short stories by Roy Huggins, the creator of the series. The Dino's Lodge segments showcased the Frankie Ortega Trio, a jazz band signed with Warner Brothers Records. This trio often performed at the real Dino's Lodge during the 1950s and 60s. An ownership dispute led to Roy Huggins leaving Warner Brothers. He had conceptualized the series and created Stuart Bailey. But the pilot episode, owned by Warner Brothers, was written by another writer under a work-for-hire agreement. Thus, Warner Brothers held legal ownership of the show. In the late 1950s, there was a popular TV series called 77 Sunset Strip. It featured Dino's Lodge, a restaurant owned by Dean Martin, in every episode. Situated at 85024 Sunset in Los Angeles, California, Dino's Lodge was a familiar place in the show. Despite Dean Martin's ownership, he never appeared on the show or was mentioned. One interesting thing about the series was how one of its directors, George Wagner, was credited. His name was written as George Wagner with the GG capitalized. Some viewers thought this might represent the number 77 as G is the seventh letter of the alphabet. Wagner never explained this, leaving it open to interpretation. Throughout its run, the show captivated audiences with its stories and familiar locations like Dino's Lodge. Even though Dean Martin owned the restaurant, his absence from the show added a bit of mystery. The unusual credit listing for George Wagner also added to the intrigue. In conclusion, 77 Sunset Strip remains a classic TV show from its time, blending drama with subtle puzzles for the audience. Its use of real locations and curious details like the GG in George Wagner's name made it memorable. In 1963, he left the series after doctors discovered a blood clot in his brain. While working alongside Frank Sinatra in the TV movie Contract on Cherry Street, Sinatra remarked to him that he should have played The Godfather, a comment he cherished. This series marked Warner Brothers' debut in formulaic detective shows. ABC, impressed by its success, ordered three similar series set in different sunny locales Bourbon Street Beat, Hawaiian Eye, and Surfside Six. Another series of the Roaring Twenties added variety by depicting a different era. The building where the detectives' offices were situated actually housed the Mary Webb Davis Modeling Agency. The front, along with part of Dino's Lodge, was recreated on a Warner Brothers soundstage. Initially, the doorknob on the mock-up was on the left, mirroring the real one, but it was later shifted to the right. Eventually, the Mary Webb Davis office was replaced by the Tiffany Theater, and the building was later demolished. When Rex Randolph from Bourbon Street Beat joined the cast in 1960, it marked the first crossover of a character between two established series. In the final season's last eight episodes, Bailey had a new secretary named Hannah, portrayed by Joan Staley. During its final season, the creative control of the show shifted to Jack Webb and William Conrad. 
They revamped the series, retaining only Ephraim Zimbalist Jr.'s character, Stuart Bailey, who transformed into an international spy. The setting for Stuart's office was the iconic Bradbury Building in Los Angeles, California. Sponsors for the show included Anison Aspirin, Surt's Breath Mints, and Salem Cigarettes. In the late 1950s, a TV series called 77 Sunset Strip hit the screens, quickly becoming a sensation. One of its standout characters, Kooky, played by Ed Burns, became immensely popular. Such was his fame that Burns even released a record album in 1959 titled Kooky Star of 77 Sunset Strip. The album featured a hit single called Kooky Kooky, Lend Me Your Comb, a duet with Connie Stevens, who also starred in the sister series Hawaiian Eye. This catchy tune reached number four on the charts. Stuart Bailey, another character from the series, made an impression driving around in a Thunderbird, adding to the show's allure. Produced by Warner Brothers for ABC, the series often dropped playful nods to other shows produced by the same studio for ABC. For instance, in one episode, Kooky appears clueless about Will Hutchins being the star of Sugarfoot. Additionally, there's a scene where Kooky is seen flipping through a TV guide featuring the stars of Maverick, another Warner Brothers production. These subtle connections added layers of enjoyment for viewers who were familiar with the broader TV landscape of the time. It was a clever way to weave the series into the fabric of television culture of the late 1950s. Tragic fact about 77 Sunset Strip during its run, 77 Sunset Strip faced an unfortunate event that left the cast and crew in shock. In 1961, Roger Smith, who portrayed Jeff Spencer, one of the central characters in the series, was diagnosed with myasthenia gravis, a neuromuscular disorder. This condition significantly affected Smith's ability to perform, leading to a decline in his health and ultimately forcing him to leave the show in 1963. The departure of a key cast member due to health issues marked a somber chapter in the history of 77 Sunset Strip. Despite the setback, the series continued for a brief period without Smith, but his absence left a noticeable void. The impact of this unforeseen health challenge on the show's dynamics and the emotional toll it took on the cast and crew added a layer of tragedy to the narrative. This incident serves as a poignant reminder of the unpredictable nature of life behind the scenes, affecting not only the individuals involved, but also altering the course of a popular television series. In the late 1950s, a popular TV series called 77 Sunset Strip aired, known for its mix of crime-solving and Hollywood glam. During filming, one of the main actors, Ephraim Zimbalist Jr., went through a tough time. His wife, Emily, struggled with mental health issues and sadly took her own life. This tragedy deeply affected him while he played the smooth investigator, Stu Bailey. Despite the sadness behind the scenes, the show remained a hit, drawing in viewers with its stories of mystery and the glitz of L.A. Zimbalist Jr.'s portrayal of Stu Bailey, alongside his partner Jeff Spencer, resonated with audiences. But beyond the fame and glamour, there were real struggles. Zimbalist Jr.'s personal tragedy reminds us that even beloved TV shows have human stories behind them. The show's impact continues, but it's important to recognize the challenges faced by those involved, 